Chinese propaganda has infiltrated schools around the world. But now the Trump administration is fighting back. Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. So I spent a lot of time on this show criticizing the Chinese Communist Party for the terrible things that they do. But credit where credit is due, they do some things really well, like propaganda. Okay, not all their propaganda is done well. But for years, the world's largest authoritarian regime, the one that does this, and this, and this, has convinced most of the world that they're just a harmless, cuddly panda bear. So they must be doing something right. Disgusting. And some of the Chinese Communist Party's most successful propaganda tools are Chinese language and culture, which, don't get me wrong, are awesome. Like, one of my favorite books is Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Team Juga Liang, all the way. But the Chinese Communist Party uses Chinese culture to build its soft power around the world. A great example of this is the Confucius Institute. It teaches Chinese at universities and schools around the world. That's some great branding. Who wouldn't want to learn Chinese from this guy? Starting in 2004, the Chinese Communist Party began opening hundreds of Confucius Institutes around the world. But in the last few years, people have started to see the truth behind the cuddly facade. Last week, the U.S. State Department designated the Confucius Institute a foreign mission. They're calling it an entity advancing Beijing's global propaganda and malign influence campaign on U.S. campuses and K-12 classrooms. This is the same thing that the Trump administration did to several Chinese state-run media back in February, and to several more in June. Foreign mission is the same designation given to embassies and consulates, and it requires the Confucius Institute U.S. Center in Washington to declare its personnel and property in the U.S. That being said, it doesn't actually stop Confucius Institutes from operating in the U.S. in any way. Still, the Chinese Communist Party didn't take this well. My favorite Chinese state-run media, slash foreign mission, the Global Times, called the U.S. a petty superpower. The attack on Confucius Institutes is a typical example of how the U.S. is oversensitive to politicize everything. Right. The U.S. is the oversensitive one that politicizes everything, says the newspaper that wrote an exclusive article about the U.S. rudely unpacking Chinese furniture. Someone needs to show the Global Times the man in the mirror. According to the Trump administration, the goal of designating the Confucius Institutes as foreign missions is to help people make informed choices about whether to allow them to continue. This is the Confucius Institute U.S. Center, the one that was declared a foreign mission. It's a nonprofit organization that supports and promotes the 75 Confucius Institutes in the U.S. According to their latest tax returns in 2018, they received more than $1.7 million from the Office of Chinese Language Council International. This office is also known as Hanban. It's the official Confucius Institute headquarters, and it's run by the Chinese government under the Ministry of Education. Now, $1.7 million is just a tiny chunk of the $158 million that the Chinese Communist Party has invested in Confucius Institutes in the U.S. since 2004. That's according to U.S. Senate investigators. There are more than 500 Confucius Institutes at universities around the world, along with over 1,000 Confucius classrooms, which teach Chinese in primary and secondary schools. That's a lot. But at one point, the Chinese Communist Party said they planned to open 1,000 Confucius Institutes by 2020. That didn't happen. In fact, just the opposite. More and more, Confucius Institutes are being closed. According to the National Association of Scholars, 45 Confucius Institutes in the U.S. have closed or are in the process of closing because American universities decided to shut them down. The Chinese Communist Party started establishing Confucius Institutes back in 2004. And for the first decade or so, they got mostly glowing reviews. Here's how they worked. 
Hanban would partner with universities to establish a Confucius Institute on campus. The university would provide classroom and office space. Hanban would provide free Chinese teachers and materials and would also give universities $100,000 to $200,000 a year for the institute. Not to mention free trips to China for university administrators and lucrative connections that could lead to more Chinese international students at these universities. And since international students pay full tuition, they were the real cash cows. So for a while, things were going great. This is Xu Lin, then head of Hanban, showing off all the congratulatory letters that Confucius Institutes received from universities in the U.S. back in 2014. Xu Lin also showed off some of the latest educational technology that the Confucius Institutes were developing. What? The Confucius Institutes are making robot pandas? Shut them down! Shut them down now! Some people tried to warn that having free language and cultural education provided by an authoritarian state might not work out so well. And sure, there were some issues, like this educational clip about the Korean War also known as the war to resist U.S. aggression and aid Korea. Or when, at North Carolina State University in 2009, the Confucius Institute allegedly objected to the university's invitation to the Dalai Lama. But it wasn't a big deal until this woman, Sonia Zhao, a teacher for the Confucius Institute, brought a human rights case against the Institute for Religious Discrimination. Zhao told a human rights tribunal that her employment contract dictated she was not allowed to join illegal organizations such as Falun Gong, a spiritual movement that China sees as a threat. She was also trained in Beijing to dodge sensitive topics in class. Here's what happened when a BBC reporter tried to ask the then director of Hanban, Xu Lin, about whether Confucius Institute teachers were allowed to express their own opinions. Why are they not allowed to be members of the banned spiritual organization, banned here in China, the, the, the organization Falun Gong? We sent our teachers to go abroad. Uh, they must be the, uh, uh, the, 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 yeah, citizen of, 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 of China. If you are the citizen, you must obey the China uh, uh, law, right? But doesn't it mean that uh, the, the Chinese government is deciding who can or can't work on UK university campuses based on their religious or spiritual belief. In, uh, according to China law, yeah, we, uh, no, China law does not allow the teacher uh, can uh, free to teach or to say that uh, Falun Gong is good in the campus. No. So that's a yes then. The Chinese government is deciding who can and can't work on university campuses around the world. As a result of Zhao's case, McMaster University, where she taught, decided to close its Confucius Institute in 2013. That was the end of the honeymoon period for the Confucius Institutes. In 2014, there were a series of protests over the Toronto School Board signing an agreement with the Confucius Institute. For more on that, I recommend you watch the documentary, In the Name of Confucius. Also in 2014, the University of Chicago and Penn State closed their Confucius Institutes, the first universities in the U.S. to do so. That was followed by a handful more in 2018, including Texas A&M, and it became a stampede. Since 2019, more than 30 universities in the U.S. have closed their Confucius Institutes. It seems that American universities are finally waking up to the China threat. Unfortunately, the Confucius Institutes are only part of that threat. But at least we're moving in the right direction. But we need to keep our guard up. Like I said, the Chinese Communist Party is a master at this soft power propaganda. What's to stop them from changing the Confucius Institutes so we have no choice but to put them back in our universities? 
And now that the party has extended its control over Hong Kong, I know what they're going to do. Goodbye, Confucius Institute. Hello, Bruce Lee Institute. I mean, we wouldn't want to learn Chinese from this guy. And now it's time for me to answer a question from you. A fan who supports China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Jason asks, congratulations on the great new studio. Now when can we expect that new show about Russia and other former Soviet states like Belarus? Thank you, Jason. It's a dream come true to finally have our own studio to film China Uncensored, America Uncovered, and the China Unscripted podcast. And Matt is especially happy that we don't have to film in his living room anymore. However, three shows is enough for now. Believe me, that keeps us busy. So Russia Uncensored will have to wait for another day. However, if you would like to know more about what's happening in Belarus, we did cover that on a recent episode of America Uncovered. Fortunately, between doing a show about the U.S. and China, that basically involves just about every other country on the planet. Thanks for your question and your support, Jason. Be like Jason and contribute a dollar or more per episode on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. And for you watching, what do you think about the Confucius Institutes? Leave your comments below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.